and he didn't know why we were doing those lifestyle activities that allowed our brains to work so much more efficiently. But beyond that, so now we know in chapter and verse exactly what we can do to make the brain more efficient. That's what I wrote this book about, Power Up Your Brain. So it, it allows, it, it's, you know, you know, it's cross-cultural. It allows individuals to, without any regard to their religious preference or their state of meditation, it allows them to build a brain that will easily rewire itself. And, you know, that has implication in terms of, uh, of creating a brain that would be more resistant, for example, to injury should it be traumatized or experience a stroke. But beyond that, allows the brain to do things more efficiently, to, to gain function, to become more intelligent, and ultimately uh, to allow us to gain access to those parts of the brain that really define us as human beings. You know, we're probably the most empathetic creature in the forest, certainly the most, hopefully the most compassionate. Mm -hmm. And clearly, you know, this unique thing that we have is the ability to plan for the future. So, you know, we can change the brain, the hard wiring of our brain. What an incredible concept. We do it through gene modification, which we now understand. We do it through specific activities. We had a video on last week of a chimpanzee, a mother whose little 16-month-old baby died, and she was holding the baby, and then she put it down and I, I, I gotta tell you, Davis, one of the most uh, heart-wrenching things I've ever seen, she'd walk up to this dead little chimpanzee, she'd put her finger on the neck where the pulse is, she couldn't feel anything, she'd walk back, she'd come back and stare at it a little bit, she'd, you know, smack it in the head to see if it would move, she'd come back again, her other members of that chimpanzee group would come and do the same thing. They knew. I mean, they actually knew. Their, her, her brain was functioning and knew there's something wrong with my little child. Yeah, and you know, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, again, what defines us uh, as being so sophisticated is uh, our ability to function based upon uh, our emotional sensations. And, you know, that's a good thing uh, when the emotions are uh, about loving and about protecting. Mm -hmm. But when those emotions are about acquiring uh, wealth at the expense of others and about, you know, killing thy neighbor... Uh, Evil then, things. Then, you know, it, it's, it's completely dysfunctional. It doesn't need to be that way. But, you know, my work is really all about creating good in, internal environment for the brain to be as healthy and functional as it can be. Well, what makes the brain do that? I mean, what makes the individual nice and loving and sweet... And then you have someone else who's a killer, a serial killer, it's bizarre. Well, you know, again, the it's case both in nature and nurture. It's some of that is unfortunately is genetic. A lot of it, though, is environment, especially early environmental uh, events. But you know, not to take it to the extreme of the serial killer, but let's just talk, for example, uh, about, for example, kids with ADHD, which is so prevalent in our society. Sure, twenty-five percent of kids in our schools. I now, think I, I think a lot of that's sugar, but that's where I'm... Well, yeah, my point is, so we know that the brain, like any other organ in the body, has an ideal set of uh, fuels, et cetera, that need to be in place for it to run in an optimal way. You know, you don't want to run uh, cheap gas in a car that only will run on unleaded, or it will not. You can't give a kid the wrong kinds of fuel or food that is contaminated with pesticides, et cetera, and expect that kid to perform well. Right. And the key ingredient in the kid who needs, which kid doesn't, but the key ingredient for the most optimal functioning brain is a specific fat called DHA. And for your listeners, I'm not saying DHEA. That's a different kettle of fish, no pun intended. But DHA is an omega-3 that is, for example, rich in fish oil. The reason people say that fish is brain food. But it turns out, as fate would have, and I asked this question during my lectures to, you know, wonderfully qualified doctors, and I say, you know, in, in talking about DHA, what do you think is the richest source of DHA in nature? And, you know, the, they'll call out, well, mackerel or sardines or krill oil, on and on. And oddly enough, the richest source of DHA, this incredibly important brain fat in nature, is human breast milk. Now, that's, I think, important information. Why is that? Because that's the key player for building a better brain in many, many regards. Number one, 
your brain is 70% fat. I don't mean, George, I'm not being rude to you, but our brains are 70% <laughs> fat. And structurally... Mine is 60%. <laughs> well, of that fat, 25% of it is DHA. So just in terms of building the brain, a quarter of your brain's fat is this incredibly important fat, DHA, that we as humans barely make uh, through our physiology. Mm -hmm. It's really through our diet. Why is that ingredient so important? Well, aside from the structural co uh, considerations of being 25% of your brain's fat and your brain is 70% fat, here's the other big player with reference to DHA. As you would expect, uh, where I'm leading is DHA is a critically important epigenetic factor. DHA turns on the genes to build a better brain. It turns on the genes that stimulate the growth of new brain cells and even the connection of those brain cells and the pruning of the brain cells or the getting rid of those connect connections uh, that are less important. So in that regard, it's a powerful epigenetic factor. And it's why we, you know, we're so involved in recommending breastfeeding. But beyond recommending breastfeeding to build a better brain for a child, Mother has to have a high intake of DHA so that mother's milk is rich in this brain, this, this vital ingredient for building a better brain, which is DHA. So women should supplement with DHA when they're, they're pregnant and really throughout their lifetimes as, as I do every day anyway. Um, you know, the nice thing about DHA is that it's now available as a vegetarian product. So, you know, people who don't want to have uh, fish oil for whatever reason, risk of contamination or depleting fish stocks in the environment, which makes sense, both of them, you can now buy a DHA which is derived from algae, DHA that's made in a, a laboratory that is uh, available as a supplement in any health food store. The, what, what's the main message that you would like people to take with Power Up Your Brain? What do you want people to come away with? That's a very good question, and I think the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal in writing this book is really that people ultimately realize that we can transcend to a better place, and that we have this ability right now, and that the human brain has this gift. The ability to access that gift can really ultimately serve as, as salvation for mankind. And it's not that hard to do. And there's nothing uh, unique about it. And no one owns the rights to that ability, though some may want to believe that they do. That, you know, we have a way out. Um, that we have a, the next step in our evolution to get to a place to allow us to achieve great things and stop the suffering. I think that would probably be the, the bottom line importance of reading this book. Can you take supplements to better the brain? Oh, unquestionably. To be on, let's say, the omega-3? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, you and I have talked about uh, those things that turn on those pathways mm -hmm. to re increase antioxidant protection and reduce uh, inflammation. But one of the things we talk about in the book that's really so fascinating is the human brain has a very unique ability to use to fat as an energy source. And, you know, I even go so far as to speculate that, uh, bear with me on this for a moment, that, you know, we've, we've always wondered why did uh, our species is sort of, we have this image that we defeated Neanderthal and that Neanderthal 60,000 years ago was, was uh, beaten down by our cleverness. Mm -hmm. in the, in and the disappeared. Article. Yeah, and because we're so clever and we were so smart. But, but the bottom line is, first of all, uh, these guys were massive, muscular, you know, incredible machines. You know, the skeletons that were found of Neanderthal were, were, you know, many of them had broken bones and yet survived. You know, they, the bones had fractured many years before. And back then, really all you had were sticks and rocks. And I, I just thought, like, I kept thinking about this image of modern Homo sapiens up against Neanderthal when each side has sticks. And who's going to win that battle? So, I, I don't know that, you know, that, that's been the contention is, well, we came and repopulated and, and, you know, we ended up killing off all the Neanderthal and that's why they're, they went extinct. But, you know, a couple things are flawed in that. Number one, we do know that uh, we do share DNA, so there was uh, interbreeding, number one. And number two, this contention that we had, um, that the reason we were so successful is because we have a bigger brain and we're smarter and all of that. Well, 
In point of fact, the Neanderthal brain was 20% larger than yours and mine. That's right. So yeah. that said, what else could it have been? Well, what we know is that Homo sapiens, our species, has this unique ability to utilize body fat as a brain fuel, and that is incredibly unique. So we have the ability in times of starvation to power up the brain using body fat. And it turns out that this is an extremely, number one, an efficient source of energy for the brain, which Neanderthal may not have had. But number two, that in the, the utilization of this type of body fat that's metabolized into a specific chemical called beta-hydroxybutyrate, when we're using our body fat during times of calorie restriction or even starvation, it actually is very preserving for brain function. It actually enhances the growth uh, of the brain and the vitality of the brain. So one of the key players that we talk about in Power Up Your Brain is actually coconut oil because coconut oil contains this type of fat that simulates the body being starved. So we're able to take advantage of that chemistry uh, without having people you know, wander the, uh, the savanna looking for tubers uh, in hopes of, of, survi of surviving. You know, we were basically hunter-gatherers, and, you know, unfortunately these days it's, it's sort of hunting down the nearest convenience store and, and gathering the chips. Sure. So, Which um, is not good for your brain, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's not good for your brain. The other thing uh, that's certainly not good for the brain is the, is the carbohydrates that are just so ubiquitous in the... Because of the sugar? Yep. Yeah. The standard, you know, and we're genetically programmed to seek out sweets. Why is that so? Because in in times of being hunter-gatherers, that's how we knew when fruit was ripe. And the reason we were drawn to ripen fruit is because that's when it had the highest level of nutrients. So we're designed to seek out fruit. Yeah. It's part of who we are. But now, you know, uh, sweet and sugar is present 365, 24-7, and that's why 38% of Americans are obese and more than 60% are, are significantly overweight. And getting higher. Yeah, and it's, it's devastating. And people don't talk about it, but the, the one organ that seems to, to respond worse to this environment, to the obesity, is the brain. You, when somebody says, you know, he's got like a mush brain, you know, does, does that mean he's got you know, too much fat on his brain? Who's this? You know, when, when people say, you know, oh. he's, he's got a mush brain or something like that. I, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, the, the problem Can is... Can you have a fatty brain? Oh, hopefully, yes. That's what you want. You, know, you do want that. You okay. build the brain. Your brain, as I said, is 70% fat, but you're building that brain not out of... You know, you're not creating these fats. The brain builds the fats from the fats that it is provided. So... Uh, the brain loves very loose, very flexible, natural kinds of fat. But when we offer up in our diets fats that have been modified, which we call hydrogenation or a saturation, when we use lots of saturated fats, these are stiff and unmalleable types of fats that build a brain that is mushy, that is sluggish, that doesn't work. The brain is built from the fats that it is given. And, you know... There is nothing wrong with fat in the diet. We live in a society that is fat-phobic. Uh, the foods are low-fat or no-fat, this and that. And really, the bottom line is fat is a wonderful and critically important part of the human diet. And these days, unfortunately, because it shares a name with a totally different situation, that is being fat, you know, people steer away from fat. Sure. And, you know, the bottom line here is it's the carbs that are getting people. You know, people, the... Uh, Dr. Agatston and, uh, you know, people who've written about uh, low-carb diets like the South Beach diet. Or Dr. Atkins. Or Dr. Atkins himself um, were really absolutely on target in terms of understanding the importance of a higher fat ratio to carbohydrate and protein as well. Because we know that it's the carbs that stimulate insulin production, which stimulates fat production, storage of, of calories for the winter that's never going to come, the winter of lack of available food uh, sources. We've always got food. That's not the issue. We don't need to be storing fat. So, you know, the, those types of diets, Atkins and South Beach, with adequate exercise is the way to a healthy brain, not just a healthy heart. All right, David, stay with us. We're going to come back in just a moment. When we do, I want to talk with you about vitamin D. Seems to be on everybody's mind these days. 
and also spirituality.